equally, all particles will be equally affected. Okay? So in other words, all inertial particles will suddenly accelerate in the same way. Now, what I do is I can simply pose it to any, any kind of student who studied mechanics and ask them, is that at all possible? Does it make any sense that you'll have inertial particles and as a result of some kind of field, suddenly they all accelerate and they all accelerate in the same way, irrespective of their characteristics? Is that at all physically intuitive? And the answer, of course, comes up very quickly. Yes, that's gravity. So gravity has exactly that feature, which is the equivalence principle, that all masses accelerate in the same way. When they come into a certain region of space, they all accelerate. Now, depending on their initial conditions, their direction and speed, their acceleration is added on to the velocity and takes them in a different trajectory and so on. But at any given point in space where there is a gravitational field, there's a unique acceleration pointing in some direction. And it doesn't really matter how the particles are moving with whatever speed, they all have this acceleration at this point in space. Now I'm going to find, define the word free fall. What does that mean? You're not resisting the gravitational pull on you. That's the free part of it. So this is, if it's shot out as a projectile at this angle, nothing is resisting it. It's not resisting the gravitational pull. Free fall doesn't mean only falling, it means that your acceleration is in the direction, let's say, of gravity. So if you throw something up and curves down, right, all the while the acceleration is downward. The acceleration is always in the same direction, downward. So it's constantly be said to fall even though it's rising. And it's constantly being accelerated down, it's considered to be in free fall the whole time. An orbit is in free fall the whole time, even though it maintains, if let's say it's a circular orbit, it maintains exactly the same radial distance from the center of the Earth, it's considered to be in free fall the entire time. And of course, something that's dropped straight down, radial infall, uh, obviously is in free fall, but it's in free fall on the way up as well as down. We always, certainly in high school, we assume that the gravitational field is the same everywhere, 9.8 meters per second square pointing down. I mean, why complicate matters, right? And let's say we're here in this building. Earth, gravitational field, our building, and the usual assumption that we have this homogeneous, this uniform field where we can describe it as an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square throughout this building on this floor, at different wings of the floor, up at the top, down in the basement. So everywhere we have basically this uniform field, it's all gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second square down. Right. There is an equal accelerative force acting on all of us, which means if we don't resist that force, if we allow ourselves to be in free fall, then effectively we are inertial. This kind of field, gravity, right, does not produce any inertial effects, even though the motion is accelerated, which is kind of weird because we always used to think that it's not true, that any accelerated motion leads to inertial effects. Now, Einstein says, if you can't distinguish any effect of this kind of motion, you claim that it's accelerated, you say that there's this force of gravity and you can't measure any kind of acceleration. This is indistinguishable from an inertial state, and I claim that it is inertial.
Einstein's principle, his principle of equivalence, or part of that one aspect of the principle of equivalence, was his blanket statement in saying there is no phenomenon which would behave differently in such a frame. So we have the gravitational force, and usually, at least in high school, you say F is equal to GMM over R squared and so on, right? But what makes a lot more sense is to talk about the acceleration, because the acceleration of all particles is the same. So you could imagine an acceleration field outside of mass. Here's the Earth. Outside the Earth, at any point, we can compute what the acceleration would be of any object, whatever size, whatever shape and mass, et cetera, density, we know exactly what the acceleration would be. Acceleration would be such and such amount in that direction. Over here it would be the same amount, but in that direction. Over here it would be a little bit less, and so on and so forth. So instead of talking about a force, and then having to figure out how that force affects different particles, what we do is we talk about an acceleration, a field in space, and the acceleration that any particle will experience in that field. That's correct, this metric mass. And we have outside here a force G and M over R squared. Now, of course, as a result of the equivalence principle, we can write acceleration divided by the mass, and we get G M over R squared, which means that at every point in space outside this mass, we have a radially directed acceleration with an amount equal to G M over R squared at every point. Now this is very nice because what that means is that we have an acceleration field. And this is something that can only be done in gravity. If you're having, for example, an electric field or any other kind of field, then you have to have, you have to use F, the force field, because the resulting acceleration of this force, let's say it's a QQ over R squared force, the resulting acceleration will be QQ over R squared divided by M, force over mass. So you're going to have to talk about a force field. If you're talking about gravity, you can uniquely define an acceleration field rather than a force field. So gravity produces an acceleration field. What that means is that at any point in space, at a given time, you have a bunch of particles. You have a particle moving with a velocity in this direction at a certain speed. Another one is moving like that. Another one is moving like that. Whatever. As they cross this point, if they're crossing here simultaneously, let's say, if it's a static field, it doesn't matter then they all experience exactly the same acceleration, irrespective of their mass and irrespective of their initial conditions, their speed and direction. And that's why you can uniquely define at each point in space the acceleration field. And we don't really care in terms of the basic physics about the initial speeds and directions of some particles. Those are like particular examples to solve later. The, the theory is built on the fact that you have a field in the space around this spherically symmetric object and it's an acceleration field given by this. Well, we know that gravity affects all masses in the same way. Right now, I'm experiencing, you're experiencing weight. Your weight pulling down, but actually what you feel is not your weight. What do you feel now? Do you feel your weight on you? What actual force do you feel? Uh, the normal force. The normal force, resisting the weight. There are non-gravitational forces at work in the floor and the chair, and they're helping you resist. The gravitational force is pulling you down, and the non-gravitational forces are pushing back up, so the sum of the forces are zero. So what you're feeling actually is a force upwards. Now what's interesting, if we take everybody and every object here, we all have different masses. Maybe we have different densities, there's tables, there's chairs, people, and so on. But if you divide by each person's mass, so you take their weight, divided by the mass, what remains? 
it's a quantity that we don't really have a name for usually, but what are the units? When I'm standing here, when you're standing or sitting and watching this, what are you actually feeling? We discussed this. You're feeling the normal force on you coming from the non-gravitational forces, the electromagnetic and basically at the end, the quantum mechanical, etc. forces in all the materials and that's pushing up on you and that's what you feel. And if you take everybody and all the pieces of furniture and they have different masses, some of them have a large mass, some a small mass, and whether they're sitting or standing, they're going to be feeling different normal forces. The one with the large mass is going to feel a, a weight that is determined by its mass, and this one is going to feel a weight determined by its mass. And it's going to feel this normal force due to its weight. Now, if you divide by the mass, of course, you end up with G. So there is an equivalent accelerative push up that's exactly equal for all of them. Okay, so you have, we all have weight. The weight is basically the gravitational force on us, yeah. right? Obviously the weight of everybody here and every object in the room is different, but partly because of size, partly because of density and so on. So everybody has a different weight. But if you divide everybody's weight by their mass, what will remain? Uh, the acceleration or gravitational acceleration. Some, it's not exactly gravitational acceleration because gravitational acceleration is something that actually moves down. But it's, what remains is basically exactly the same as the, as the gravitational acceleration, something with units of acceleration and the amount of the gravitational acceleration. But it's some kind of a push acceleration upwards. Okay? And it's identical. Everybody's push acceleration that they're experiencing is exactly identical because it's mass independent. The weight is the gravitational uh, g m over r square, m of the Earth, times your mass. Your acceleration is that divided by your mass. So it just leaves the g m over r square. So everybody, although they have different masses and densities and different weights, has the same amount of gravitational push acceleration, which is, again, it's coming from the non-gravitational forces of the floor and the chair that are pushing back up. But what you're experiencing is an acceleration upwards. But what you're experiencing is an acceleration upwards. Now that acceleration is indistinguishable from what? What other physical situation would give rise to exactly this same phenomenon? A whole bunch of people in one place, and they're all experiencing exactly what we're experiencing now, in, in the sense of the actual feel of it, and in the physical sense, the mathematical sense that we just described, that we all have acting on us a, an upwards accelerative push, so to speak. Uh, that, you see, something, yes, something like that, but let's say what would give rise, you're, you're right, but what would give rise to exactly this? We're all sitting in a room and we feel a force upward, centrifugal force be pulling you to the side and so on. Just to give an exact example, you imagine this building, like it goes exactly, if this building was an empty distant space, and there's no gravity around anywhere, but the building was accelerating in this direction, we would feel exactly the same thing and we would measure exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter what piece of furniture or what person or what mass or what density or what size, there's a, an accelerated push upwards. And as we mentioned, that is completely indistinguishable from some kind of a interplanetary building. Rocket, which is all the way maybe in intergalactic space totally empty of matter, there's no gravitational field that's measurable, and there's nothing even visible, maybe no galaxies visible anywhere nearby. And everybody in that building is feeling 
that acceleration. And since it's just an acceleration, then obviously it doesn't matter if you're on the third story or the second story, the first story, or what side of the building you're on, you're all feeling, you all have exactly the same acceleration, and therefore you're going to feel exactly the same accelerative push, so to speak, on your feet, irrespective of your mass. Obviously, it doesn't depend on your mass. It depends on the acceleration that this rocket ship building has. So there it's no surprise. What's surprising is that in gravity, it happens that way, that everybody here feels the same accelerative push. And that's why we can model what's happening here in this building on the planet Earth with uh, an intergalactic traveling spaceship building. And any measurement that we make will be the same in both. They're indistinguishable. So a strong equivalence principle claims that any physics experiment that one would make in empty intergalactic space in this interplanetary rocket building would give exactly the identical results an electromagnetism experiment, light experiment, anything, will give exactly the same results as here on planet Earth. In other words, if you want to know how does gravity interact with some other force phenomena, and you wanted to do a, an experiment here in the lab, and you were wondering how to do the equations, you could, if you want, just go into intergalactic space and do the experiment there in a rocket. Now, of course, you say, well, it's kind of difficult. I don't have the budget for that. Um, so what do we do? So we can do just ignore gravity, pretend there's no gravity, and just write the equations for an accelerated platform or rocket or building, whatever it is, and put in your phenomenon there and just see how it would work in an accelerated frame. Of course, it sounds ridiculous, it's absurd, and one can easily make several objections. I can think of two objections to saying that these free-fall particles are inertial. For example, anybody want to suggest? We don't measure inertial forces, we know that. But what else, what other qualifications would be needed, maybe, for us to consider this to be inertial? Okay, well, one is the trajectory is certainly not a straight line. I mean, right, inertial trajectories should be straight lines. Another one is that, I mean, here I am standing on the earth. I'm stationary, right? I'm inertial, right? Right now, not moving, I'm inertial. Okay, I take something, I throw it up. I mean, I see it accelerating the whole time. This is accelerating. You can't tell me it's inertial. I, I am inertial. I'm not moving. And that was accelerating. So those are two simple disproofs. So should we reject this idea that gravitational free fall is basically inertial? Well, you think deeply into it. Einstein did. And he realized that one can easily overcome these two objections. If you imagine yourself in free fall and you're watching any free fall object, whatever the trajectory, I'll show you in a minute why, how you can see that all of those trajectories are actually straight lines. I think it looks absurd for us with straight lines. I mean, obviously it's curved, but think of it. If you're in free fall, right? Just for a simple case, let's make it free fall, meaning radial infall, straight down. And you're seeing some other trajectory which is clearly curved, right? Now, 
what's happening, imagine you're right next to each other, just to simplify matters, we're keeping the essential ingredients there. You're near each other and you're falling. Both of you are experiencing exactly the same acceleration. So as this is moving past you, it's going up with its initial velocity. It's also being accelerated downwards due to gravity, right? And you are being accelerated downwards due to gravity. If your acceleration is exactly the same, as it indeed is, then there is no relative motion between you other than due to the initial velocity. But that's a uniform motion. You have an initial velocity, whatever it was, it was ejected out of a cannon at, you know, 1,000 miles an hour, whatever it is, in that direction, right? Making a curved trajectory. But at any point along that curved trajectory, if you're in free fall alongside it, for that instant that you're alongside it, it's passing you, right? For that instant that you're alongside it, then this particle has exactly the same acceleration as you do, and so that's effectively canceled out. You have equally accelerated forces on you. The relative motion due to acceleration is gone. You've eliminated it by free fall alongside it. That's pretty amazing. So we've knocked off one major objection. But the other objection seems even more serious. So, you know, it's very nice that you're telling me that in a free fall frame, this is a straight line, right? But what am I going to do about the observer stationary, who clearly sees that as accelerated? So Einstein's answer is, So what does Einstein say? If you can, if you feel the same thing and you measure the same thing, these states are completely indistinguishable and therefore they are identical. In other words, there is no physical meaning to saying that we are not now accelerated. We are accelerated. We are accelerated because the system in terms of what's measurable physically is exactly that accelerated brain. So it's, it's like if you were inertial in empty space, 
far away from anywhere. And you are inertial, you have no inertial effects. And some spaceship goes by, and the rockets are on, and it's accelerated. And they're pressed back against their seat, they have accelerated forces, and they look out and say, you're accelerated. You look at them and say, I'm not accelerated, I don't measure any inertial forces on me. You say, well, I can see that you're accelerated. You look at them and you can see their chest is compressing. You say, you're undergoing acceleration. I see those accelerated effects. You're not in an inertial frame. You can't tell me that I'm accelerated. I don't measure inertial effects. I, I see on you that you have inertial effects. And that's exactly the situation of gravity. Here we are, standing on the ground, feeling this push against us. And if we measure, we find out it's all the same accelerative push. And so we are accelerated. So we certainly cannot tell this free fall particle that it is accelerated. It's us. That answers the second objection. So we had a free fall particle. In that free fall frame, there are equally accelerated forces. So no inertial forces are no inertial effects can be measured. Everything is moving relative to each other with constant speed and so on. There's no inertial forces at all. The trajectories that each one will see, even if they're moving within that frame, will all be straight lines. And the frame which contradicts them and claims that they're not inertial experiences inertial effects exactly identical to those of an accelerated frame. And so that's Einstein's model. He says, you take an inertial particle in free space, it's moving inertially, it enters into a region where there's matter and it's affected by gravity, it's still inertial. It's still inertial. A gravitational field doesn't stop something from being inertial. It was inertial, it still is inertial. And that's pretty astonishing. However, again, we come up with an objection. Can you think of an objection? We have this model. It works astonishingly. It's consistent, right? Free fall is inertial. It's amazing. It seems to work. But maybe you can think of, it has something to do with something that I snuck in, kind of. And, and sometimes when you ignore something, uh, it turns out that that was the essence. So what we pretended here was that we have a uniform field, right? Top of the floor, top of the building, bottom of the building, something. 